is former Assistant Attorney General Jeff Clark. Jeff, great to have you in studio. Good, Good to be, be here. Jeff, yes, uh, Judge Juan Merchan finding former President Trump in contempt of this gag order. This is the tenth time now slapping him with another thousand dollars. What do you make of this, and where might this actually be heading? Well, look, I think the first thing to understand, Steve, is that this order is a blatant violation of the First Amendment. We're in the midst of a presidential campaign. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the framers established the First Amendment to protect political speech first and foremost. So to have you know the nominee for one of the two major parties be, uh, first of all, in this proceeding in the first place, and that's all part of a massive lawfare strategy that I think the Biden administration and other Democrats have launched against President Trump, but then to muzzle him so that he can't speak against the people who are constantly attacking him. I mean, there's a cottage industry at MSNBC and CNN and on all these podcasts that have popped up like a thousand, you know, uh, rug rats blooming against President Trump, and he can't defend himself against that. It's a mockery of the First Amendment. And so I think that this uh, new contempt order is, you know, more of the same from Judge Mershon. And, you know, it's part in particular, the president can't even talk about the fact that Judge Mershon should be recused from this case under a New York statute about the financial interests that uh, his close family, his daughter has in sort of running down President Trump and making millions off of that. And to your point, Jeff, uh, former President Trump coming out of the courtroom today, pretty defiant. Um, not really acknowledging that gag order in, in, in what he had to say. One of the things that struck me, though, is when he came out, he was seemed to be very upset at the fact that uh, the, the state or they, they, the government wants to continue with this trial for at least two to three more weeks. The pros prosecution calling this delay tactics to keep him off the uh, campaign trail amounting to election interference. You touched on that. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I agree it's election interference. The, you know, the entire trial could easily have been put off. And as you know, we're constantly told by the talking heads on the left, President Trump, even if he gets reelected, would not have authority over a state case, right? And so if that's true, if he doesn't have authority over a state case, why can't the state case wait, you know, wait until after the election's over? That way you've taken any issue about interfering with the election by unfairly pinning down and locking in one of the candidates into the courtroom, preventing him from campaigning. You just take that off the table. It'd be you know, a very magnanimous thing to do for a fair-minded judge to do, but yet Judge Mershon refuses to do it. And I think that's an indication of his bias, Steve. And Jeff, do you see any potential path? I mean, it's kind of like an out-of-this-world concept that a former president would go to prison or go to jail, Rikers Island. Do you see a path going uh, in that direction or even home confinement? I think we're seeing one of the highest stakes games of chicken ever because I think Judge Mershon, and I think there are smart Democrats as well who uh, recognize, who are political strategists, who recognize that this could, ba you know, massively backfire, and uh, you know, just usher Trump into the to the White House. So I think they like the threat, but I don't know that they'll actually carry through on it through Judge Mershon. On the other hand, right, it's unprecedented territory for a presidential candidate to even risk being in jail for a day. So I don't know how it's going to come out. My crystal ball on this unprecedented historic situation is not clear enough. I want to get your thoughts, Jeff, on uh, the Supreme Court hearing oral arguments in Trump's immunity claim not too long ago. What were some of your key takeaways from specifically the conservative justices um, who were saying that they were concerned with how this ruling may affect future presidencies? So, Steve, a lot of the uh, liberal commentators, we're talking about people like Judge Ludig now, who purports to be a conservative but clearly has uh, left that behind, uh, and Lawrence Tribe, you know, Andrew Weissman, they are fretting uh, from the idea that the Supreme Court was asking, especially the conservative judges, a lot of hypotheticals about what about this, what about that, you know, things that they say are far afield from what Trump is accused of. But the thing to understand, you know, as for me as a lawyer that makes it particularly laughable that they're raising these points is there aren't any facts that have been found at this point. So the Supreme Court has to explore these hypotheticals in order to get a handle on the case. So I just think it shows that they're grappling with an unprecedented issue. We've never been in a situation where a president has needed even to assert this form of immunity. But I think the Supreme Court has to find some form of immunity. We have all kinds of judicially created forms of immunity. There are, there's immunity for judges. There's immunity for prosecutors. To imagine that a president wouldn't get uh, a judicially created immunity doctrine 
especially when you can see that there's a lot of lawfare element, fake element to this that's just an attempt to block him from becoming president again, I think that would be a, a tragedy for the Constitution. Jeff, lastly, do you think that a full impeachment um, would be enough of a fail-safe um, to, to, you know, stick to the Constitution? Well, that's the, the argument that Trump's lawyers are making. You know, John Sauer is saying there's an impeachment judgment clause. And so if a president is successfully impeached and then tried in the Senate and convicted, that then charges could be brought against him criminally outside of the whole impeachment uh, uh, process in the House and the Senate. But absent that, the president should have immunity, so the argument goes. We'll see whether the Supreme Court agrees, and I, I expect that decision sometime next month.